All right, guys. Hey, welcome back to the channel. And uh, hey, if you saw the last video of this brisket series, we trimmed up a nice choice cut brisket that we got from our local grocery store. Uh, so today we're actually going to cook it. Let's get into it. All right, gang, so hey, I get asked often about how I do my brisket, so that is gonna be the basis of uh, what we're gonna do with this video. Uh, it's not gonna be a straight out tutorial on how to, but I'm just gonna give you basically how I do my brisket, uh, because you guys ask me so often about various aspects of the cook, and, and so I just kinda wanna clear up how I do my brisket, okay? So whenever you're starting off with cooking brisket, you know, one of the first things that I wanna think about is, what flavor profile am I going for? You know, there's tons of different rubs out there that you can try. Uh, for me, I love salt and pepper. Uh, once you've got your flavor profile narrowed down, now you want to think about the wood you're going to use. For me, it's Texas post oak. So we got our brisket trimmed up in our last video. So let's get it rubbed up and let's get it on a pit and let's get this cook going. All right, so let's go. So as I said, I'm a salt and pepper kind of guy. And so that's what we've got here. We've just got some diamond crystal uh, kosher salt here. And we've got some uh, coarse ground 16 mesh black pepper. Now, typically I go, when I'm using Morton's, I'll go a three to one, but we're gonna go a two to one with this salt and, uh, and pepper. So basically all I do is just put a little bit of salt into my, uh, my little tub here. And now I know I'm gonna put twice as much pepper in. So we're gonna dump some pepper in there. And again, it doesn't have to be precise, guys. But there we've got a two to one basic of our uh, salt and pepper. And we'll pop the top on this. And we'll just give it a little swirl around. And that's basically gonna make up our rub for this brisket, guys. That's that simple. All right, so here again, we've got our brisket that we uh, trimmed in our previous video, and now we're ready to get this rubbed up. Now, the beautiful thing about this with having this mixture, the way we have it set up, is we can go fairly heavy with this and not worry about it being oversalted. Now, as you notice, I'm not using a binder at all. There's already enough moisture on this brisket that I don't really need to do a binder, you know? So for those of you out there that hate using mustard, don't worry about it, you don't have to. So we're just gonna get a good coat across this entire brisket and we're going to keep swirling around to make sure we're mixing up our mixture of our rub here and this is pretty much all i do when i make my brisket guys so i'll just get this on here i'll give it a good little press in and then i'll flip it over and we're going to get the other side And again, we're gonna make sure we got the sides of this brisket. And that, my friends, right there is a uh, fairly decent uh, salt and pepper rubbed brisket. We're ready to get this on the pit. Okay, so we are using our Backline Smokers 94 gallon backyard pit today. And we are gonna be uh, running this again with post oak, Texas post oak. And when we put this on here, guys, we got the point here that's gonna be closest to our firebox. I do that simply because, you know, it just protects the rest of the meat. I've got it there, we're pretty much centered on my rack here. Uh, again, fat cap is up on this, on the offset. And I'm just gonna close this guy up. We are running today between 275 and 300. And we're just gonna let it go. All right, guys, hey, we've been rolling along here for about four hours since the last time I saw you, a little over about four hours and 15 minutes. And we got this brisket put on to our uh, backline smoker and we've been running the temperature between 275 and 300 degrees solid. And that's all we've been doing for the previous four hours here now is just maintaining our temperatures, getting our wood splits on. And you know, if you're not really good with maintaining temperatures and you wanna see me do a how to maintain temperatures on an offset cooker, pop the comments down below and I'll see if I can make that happen. But uh, right now, here we are again at the four hour mark. And what we're going to be looking for is uh, I look to see if my bark is set. If my bark is set, great. If the color is there, great. If not, we're going to keep it rolling. And if it looks like it's dry, we'll go ahead and spritz it. But uh, let's take a look at this brisket and see what we've got going on. All right. All right. Let's get it cracked open here. 
and all in all our brisket is actually looking really good here uh, you can see it's got plenty of moisture here so we're not drying out too badly at all starting to develop that nice little red color we have to pay attention to this little area right here as it looks like it might get a little pooling uh, our point is facing towards our firebox so the heat is coming this direction and it does seem to be getting a little crispy there so we're gonna go ahead and uh, spritz it and today we're just gonna use our little spritzer and it's just water in here guys nothing special so we're just gonna spritz it down with water on that back side there so now we've got this brisket spritzed down I like the way this is coming along my bark is not quite set yet so we're gonna just close it up and uh, continue to maintain our temperatures and let it keep going and I'll bring you back in a little bit All right, so we just hit the seven hour mark on this cook. So we're gonna take a look here and I'm anticipating we're gonna be ready to wrap this thing here. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my probe. Now I don't care what the uh, thermometer says. I'm not looking at that. I'm just probing for the feel and it's still feeling really good. It's still really juicy. Uh, so I think we're looking good enough to wrap this brisket up here guys. So. We're going to go ahead and get this wrapped up here. I don't know. Some of you are going to be wondering. You still want to know. You still want to know. Right now I'm reading a, I'm reading a 205 in the flat. But it still feels a little tight to me. So we are going to wrap this up for a little bit. So let's get this, uh, let's get this wrapped up. All right, guys? Now the wrapping process is uh, fairly simple. I know you guys have seen me wrap a uh, brisket before, but it's all good. I'm going to show you again how I do it. Uh, again, I've got my spritz here. And again, this spritz is just water, okay? And all I'm going to do is just wet my paper down. That just makes sure that the, the butcher paper is nice and pliable. Get a little bit onto this brisket. And now we're ready to wrap this. And I'm just going to fold this over again we're fat cap up right now on this brisket so we're gonna fold it over we're gonna pull it tight to us we're gonna bring the sides over top of the brisket fold out the crease do the same thing on the opposite side now again we're mouth fat cap down meat side up and we're going to take this extra paper, put it right here so it's got a little platform to lay on. And now we're fat cap up, guys, and we're going to put this back on the pit. All right, so here we are back on our pit. We're going to get it closed up. Now, if you don't want to put it back on the pit, guys, and you have you know trouble with uh, maintaining your fires, perfectly fine to take your brisket and slap it in the oven but this is just how i do it okay so i'll bring you guys back here in a little bit all right guys so hey we just hit the ninth hour on this brisket cook and now it's time for us to go ahead and get it checked out uh we're gonna probably end up pulling it off now and uh we'll let it rest but uh let's take a look let's get this brisket off all right let's go all right Get this pulled out and get it checked right quick. And we're just gonna again take our probe. We're just gonna slide it into this brisket and it feels pretty good there. Sliding in really nice. Again, I don't really care what the uh, tent probe says. Uh, but uh, again, I know you guys are gonna wanna know. So if you can see that, it's at 211. And now it feels like I want it to feel. And so, uh, hey, I think it's time to come off. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and get this brisket off, as I just said, but I wanted to make sure I put a little emphasis on this uh, through the questions and everything that you guys are asking about your tenderness and you thought maybe it was going too long. I hit, you know, 202, 203, because somebody said that you have to pull it off at this temperature. I think I just showed you that, no, that's not necessarily true. Uh, I was already reading, what, 204, 205, something like that, uh, when we wrapped it. And we still took it up to 211 before it felt right to me so again it's all about the feel it's not about the temperature it's not about the internal temperature face it beef can be eaten 125 130 degrees it's not going to be good for a brisket at that temperature but 
my point is that it's already done. We're not worried about what that temperature is. We're worried about the tenderness. We're worried about the way that brisket feels when we slide our probe into it. So hope you guys are uh, understanding what I mean by that. And hopefully that clears up a little bit of confusion, but man, I'm gonna get this brisket off this pit. All right, guys, so we just got this brisket off, as you can see here, and now I want to address resting. Now, many of you guys have asked about how do I rest my brisket and that type of thing. Just like this. It's in a pan. We're leaving it out at ambient temperature, and it's going to sit just like this for a couple of hours. After that, if I want to make it a longer rest period, which I do often, then I'll put it in my food warmer, set it about 155, 160 degrees, and I'll let it hold that temperature and hold this brisket until whenever I'm ready to slice it. But for right now, the interim time of cooling this brisket down, just like this, this is where it's going to rest. Okay? See you in a bit. All right, gang, so hey, we are back in the studio. We've got our brisket rested. Now, I let this one rest for a couple of hours, uh, but I typically rest my brisket a lot longer than that. But you know what? I'm trying to finish up this video. Uh, so to give you an idea of what I do when I rest my brisket again, it comes off the pit. It sits at ambient temperature, enough to get the temperature down, the internal temperature, get it down to about 160 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, it usually takes about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, at that point, I'll put it in my food warmer. Now, most of you might not have a food warmer, and that's fine. You can use your oven. Uh, just put your oven, set your oven to 160 degrees, and place that wrap brisket in there and let it hold until it's time for you to cut it. But uh, again, we've got our brisket rested here, so we're going to go ahead and pull it over. And here we go, guys. You can kind of take a look at that. Now, I did have some of this kind of peel off when I pulled the uh, butcher paper off, but it's all good. And so we've got the uh, point on this side. We've got the flat on this side. This is a relatively small brisket. So, uh, and you saw it when it was raw. So you see just how much it loses when it does cook. So we're just going to go ahead and get this cut right down the middle here. Just like so. And there you go. Nice little brisket flat right there. Nice little point right there. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit sliced off here off of this flat right quick, just to see what we're working with here. And it might be just a little more done than I wanted, but hey, that's good all backyard barbecue, right? So it's looking pretty good. Let's see if we can give it a little, a little taste. Great taste in the brisket, excellent bark on it. That salt and pepper ratio is just right. So guys, hopefully this helps you. Uh, hopefully that answers a lot of the questions you've been sending me, asking me about how I do my brisket and what you're doing wrong. It's not that you're doing anything wrong, guys. You just have to get it all the way to completion. Sometimes it's not ready at 204 or 205, as you saw today. So uh, again, do it to the way it feels. When it feels right, it's probably right. All right. So, hey, it's been fun cooking this brisket and showing you how I do mine. Uh, guys, I'll see you in the next video. All right. Peace.